Hey folks, welcome to Bio 2050, Human Anatomy and Physiology 1, Fall Semester 2021. This is the video that accompanies the syllabus for this course. So we are looking at the syllabus right here, right now, and we're going to kind of go through it a little bit, figure out what's what with this course. So like I said, this is PGCC. This is Anatomy and Physiology number one, Bio 2050. If you are in this class right now, you should probably be in one of these sections, either DLO1, DLO2, or DLO3, one of those. All right, that's me. I am your instructor. My name is Alex Imholtz. That's me right there. There we go. So, I've been teaching at PGCC for about 20 years or so. I've got a bachelor's in biology from the University of Maryland, College Park. got my master's in physiology there, too. Um, if I'm not teaching this class, I'm taking care of my kids. I've got four kids. Um, I like to be outside. I'm a runner. I'm a, I'm a biker. I'm a reader. I do all sorts of fun stuff. So, if you ever have any questions, concerns, shoot me an email. This is the best way to get in touch with me. amholtz at pgcc.edu. I check my email way too often, and I will get back to you really soon. Okay? So, that's me. You know you're in the right place. You're taking Bio 2050. You're in one of these sections. Let's talk a little bit more about this class. All right. So, just to double check and make sure you're aware of this, this is what is called an online asynchronous course, okay? This is an online asynchronous course. This means that we do not have any meeting times. There is no, like, classroom where we meet and I talk to you through the computer. Instead, you're going to be watching videos, doing readings, doing assignments, and also, of course, taking some exams. So there are no set meeting times. I will have office hours where I'm available for you to, you know, come and chat with me and ask questions, but it's not like a set class time. All right, Wanda, get that out of the way. Okay, so some more stuff. All right, there's some stuff about the class that I am, the college makes me put in the syllabus. So I want to run through these things extra quick, all right? What we are going to do in this course, a and 1, is we're going to look at the structure, so like how things are built, as well as the function, basically how things work, of the human body. We're going to talk about cells, because of course, you and I are both made of trillions and trillions of cells. We're going to talk about these things called tissues, which are basically just groups of cells that do something. We're going to talk about transport, how we move things from place to place. We're going to talk about the integumentary system, better known as the skin, your skeletal system or your bones, your nervous system, i.e. your brain, your spinal cord, and your nerves, as well as your muscular system, the 600 or so muscles that make up this one. Don't worry, we're not going to do all 600. This is what's considered a science gen ed class. All right, another thing i got to tell you, these classes are supposed to require 37 and a half hours of work per credit. It's a four-credit course. If you do the math, it's 150 hours of work for the semester, roughly 15 weeks, 10 hours per semester is a reasonable guide. If you're taking this course, you should have taken bio 1010 or 1040 or got permission you should have done this math te course or got the right score on the math test all right all that preliminary stuff being said let's keep on chatting about this course when we're done like when this course is over in i don't know mid-ish december you are hopefully going to know a lot of anatomical structures and physiological processes. I hope you know a bunch, because we're going to do a bunch. You're going to be able to understand 
how things complement one another, how the structure of something fits its function. For example, what's the biggest bone in your body? Do you know? It's cool if you don't. It is your thigh bone. It is called your femur. It is big. Its bigness, its structure, help it support a lot of weight, which is its function. That's a really easy example. There's all sorts of these things where structure and function complement one another. You're also going to understand this thing called homeostasis which is this, think of it as this like equilibrium that you have in your body. This dynamic equilibrium. You are aware of a lot of parts of homeostasis in your body. You know about something like blood pressure. Your blood pressure isn't crazy high, it's not crazy low, right? It is that in this good range. And keeping things in a good range is this stuff called homeostasis. And we're going to talk a lot more about both these. We're also going to talk about the hierarchical nature of anatomical organization of systems in this course. And this is just a fancy way of saying that we're going to have little things that make bigger things and bigger things that make even bigger things. And we, we give them names and we give them jobs. And we're going to hit that like crazy. All right. So these are some big picture goals that we're going to have. What else are we doing? Well, we're going to need books. We are going to need books. There are two of them you're going to need. One of them is called Anatomy and Physiology, an Integrated Approach by McKinley and Dean and O'Loughlin. Or, uh, there they are right there. And you can get this book from PGCC Bookstore. You can get it from any major online bookseller. You do not have to get the fourth edition. I mean, this is the one that I listed here. It's the one that's in the bookstore, but you don't have to get it. You can find the third edition out there. It is cheaper. It is good. And you just need the book, like the, just the book. You don't need the stuff that you can buy with it. Um, there's like website access and things like that. I'm not going to make you have any of that stuff. Some teachers make you buy the website access and do things on the website. I'm not doing that. I mean, there's cool stuff. So if you did, if you did get the website access, there's cool things to do and cool, th you know, ways to, to learn and study. But I'm not going to make you have it. Now, as far as the book goes, get the hardback if you want, the loose leaf, the ebook. I personally like the hardback books because I like to, I like a physical book to read. I don't like reading on the screen. I know I'm like, you know, it's a generational thing sometimes for people, but I like having a physical book. And for me, I feel like the hardback book lasts longer than a loose leaf one. All right, so that's the book. There's another book. That's a book, I guess. There's another book. The other book is the lab manual, which is this guy with all the red blood cells on it. Anatomy and Physiology Lab Manual, 4th edition by Hubbley and M. Holtz. So get this book from the PGCC bookstore. There's also an e-version of the lab manual that you can order as well. Now, I will be posting a link to the first five, I think it's five, labs. So if your book is like, if you ordered it and you're worried, oh my gosh, it hasn't come yet, what am I going to do? Relax, chill out, because... The first five labs you can actually just download. So I don't want anybody telling me, I haven't done the first lab or the homework with that because I don't have my book yet. Well, it's okay because you can download the first five labs. All right. Those are the two books. Let's keep on moving. Some other things you're going to need. All right. This is an online course, so you got to have a computer. Got to have be able to get online, right? Um, as far as like homework goes and assignments, there are a lot of homework assignments, and generally, what you're going to do is either take a picture of it with your phone or use a scanner app and email it to me. It's generally how you're going to turn in homework this semester. Um, so you hopefully you have a phone with a camera or a scanner app on it. 
what else? You're going to need a lot of paper. Maybe not a whole, like, giant box like this. You're going to need colored pencils. Those are great to have as well. So there's some basic supplies you're going to want to have. It doesn't have to be pencils, by the way. It could be markers, crayons, anything that you can use to make a color picture. Okay, so that's the materials. Let's talk a little bit more about how this class works. This is an online asynchronous course. I mentioned that already. Asynchronous means you're doing things on your own time, basically. There are no set meeting times. Instead, you're watching videos, doing readings, doing assignments, taking exams. There are time frames for these things. But when you do these things during those time frames is up to you. Now, traditionally, this class is divided into a lecture and lab portion. So we still do that even though we don't have like an actual lecture period or in, we're not in an actual lab. We still do that division. And we're also going to divide this course into four separate units. Unit number one is an intro, plus we talk about cells transport and the integumentary system. What was that again? That was the skin. Then in unit two, we talk about bone structure and function, as well as joints, which allow, of course, for movement and stability. And we also start talking about the nervous system. We'll intro to the nervous system. Then we move on to that big brain and the spinal cord, which is attached to it. The spinal nerves, which are coming out of the spinal cord and the cranial nerves that are coming out of the brain. Last but not least, we talk about something called the autonomic nervous system. If you ever heard the term fight or flight, that's part of that, as well as the muscular system. That's pretty much everything we're doing right there for the lecture part of the course. For the lab part, unit one is general terms, plus some tissues, epithelial tissues and connective tissues. Then we do skeletal system, nervous system, and muscular system. Those are our remaining units for the lab part. All right, let's expand a little bit on how this class works. When you go into Blackboard, you are going to find that each unit has its own folder. For every single unit, there it's broken down by week, okay? So there'll be a, a week one folder, a week two folder, a week three folder, etc. And inside those folders, that's where you're going to find the videos, the, reading, the readings, as well as the homework assignments and even the exams. As far as homework assignments, you are going to be doing drawings. Whoops, went a little too fast there. You're going to be doing drawings. You're going to draw a lot of stuff. Talk more about that in a sec. You're going to be making these things called concept maps. You're also going to have a bunch of Blackboard quizzes. And remember, there were four units for lab, four units for lecture. And so you're going to end each unit with a lecture exam and a lab exam. Okay. So we're starting to get an idea of how this class works. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've already been in Blackboard and you've played around. There is also a video about navigating Blackboard. Hopefully, you're checking that out, too. Okay. So, remember, we've got four units. End of each unit, we have a lecture exam worth 150 points. So... 4 times 150, that gives me 600 points right there. Lab exam at the end of each unit, 4 times 100, that gives me 400. So for the assignments, like homework assignments, drawings, concept maps, and quizzes, generally be worth around 50 points, may vary a little bit. And so 4 times 50... equals 200. So each unit is worth about 300 points. The whole class, 600, 400, 200, is worth 1,200 points. And this number might vary a little bit. Kind of depends on like how much homework I give you. 
that sort of thing. But basically, if you get more than 90% of the points, you get an A. If you get somewhere in the 80s, you get a B. Somewhere in the uh, 70s, you get a C. Somewhere in the 60s, you get a D, etc. If you're close, I will round up. Um, but you got to be really close. All right. Let's keep on going more about how this class works. Well, let's talk about the exams for a second. At the end of each unit, there'll be a lecture exam, 150 points. Lab exam, 100 points. Lecture exam will cover the material we do for lecture videos, lecture readings, lecture assignments. Lab, assign lab exams, rather, will cover material from lab videos, lab readings, and lab assignments. Exams are given on Blackboard. They're going to have an availability period. You know, I won't just say you got to take it between like 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. on Friday. Now, I'll give you a good, a good stretch where you can, well, the exam will be available. There'll be a time limit, too. Usually, the exams will be multiple choice questions, matching questions. All that might vary a little bit. Now, you're on the honor system here. Best thing to do is to take these exams without any notes, books, etc. If you're trying to look up answers, you are going to run out of time. I will grade your exams. They'll be, you'll be able to look at them. If you can't take an exam because of some sort of catastrophe, let me know. I'll give you a makeup. All right. So online exams, use your brain. Don't use other stuff. It's the right way to do it. Okay. As far as assignments go, mentioned this earlier. There are three basic kinds of assignments we're going to have this semester. There are drawings, concept maps, Blackboard quizzes. Most assignments will be worth two points each. Now you might wonder why are we going to draw things? Well, drawing is a fantastic way to learn anatomy and physiology. You know, I'm going to tell you to draw a heart, for example. No, I won't. That's AMP2. But in AMP2, I make you draw a heart, for example. And you might draw a heart. Whenever I draw a heart on the computer, it always looks kind of like a strawberry. Da -da -da. And there is something about drawing and labeling that is good for learning. There totally, totally is. If you draw it and label it, it is such a far superior thing to do than to just try to read about it. So I am big on drawing. I am not worried about like your talent as an artist, okay? And you're not drawing so much as you are like copying. You, know, you should have like something you're looking at when you're doing a drawing of something. You're not just going to draw a femur from, from memory, right? You're going to look at a picture of it and you're going to draw it. So I want you to put in some effort. I want you to be complete. So if you have a picture, show me some effort, use color, and include all the required things, you get the full points. Less than that, you get less than two points. People have just like right-clicked on pictures from a Google image search and tried to turn that into me. You can't do that. All right? That is totally, totally unacceptable. All right. So we're going to be doing drawings. We are also going to be doing concept maps. Concept maps are diagrams that show the relationship between different items. I have a video explaining this further. I encourage you to watch it. Um, again, they're graded on effort, accuracy, and completeness. Okay. Blackboard quizzes. There are going to be quizzes on Blackboard, multiple choice, matching type quizzes on the current material. So those are pretty easy. Those are, are really straightforward. Assignments always have due dates. You'll find a due date in the description of the assignment. Basically for assignments, it's like, this is, this is typically how it works. Week one assignments are due at the end of week one. Week two assignments are due at the end of week two. Week three, at the end of week three, and so on. Makes total sense. All right, we're flying through the syllabus couple more things to discuss. Okay, how do I turn in the drawings and concept maps? Take a picture of it. 
Use your phone, use a camera on your phone, email it to me. Or if there's a scanner app that you, that you like, use that. Email me the file, okay? One, one um, caveat, depending on what kind of phone you have, if you have a newer iPhone, it may take pictures in HE, HEIC format. Definitely change the format on those before you send them to me. Um, this is the one thing I require. JPEGs are great. Um, PDFs are great. Anything that's not HEIC is perfect. Okay? Um, and by the way, doing the drawings and concept maps is a great way not only to learn stuff, it's also a good way to kind of help your grade. You know, if you are doing all these pictures and doing well on them and doing the concept maps and doing well on them, you'll be getting full credit for them. And that is a nice way to build points to offset. Like, if you don't do great on a single exam or something, you do well in that homework, then, it, you know, you're still okay. Now, when you are sending your assignments, and just in general, practice some good email etiquette. So in an email to me, don't just have like a blank email with a picture attached as your homework assignment. In your email, give me a greeting, a salutation. Say, hi, Professor M. Holtz, dear Professor M. Holtz. How's it going, Professor M. Holtz? Nothing fancy, all right? Tell me what it is. Say, hi, this is this is so-and-so. I'm turning in the you know assignment assignment three from lecture. Okay, that way I know what's there. Make sure your name is somewhere in there. Don't make me hunt for your name or try and deduce your name from your your email address, especially when people have similar names. So put your name in there. You don't have to like say sincerely yours at the end, but Put your name at the end of your email. All right. Moving on. What else do we have to talk about in the syllabus? Everybody's favorite thing, which is extra credit. There are a bunch of extra credit practice tests for exams, both lab and lecture. You can take those extra credit practice tests as many times as you like, although the last time you take it, it's the score that goes in the grade book. I will also give you extra credit assignments during the videos for lecture and lab. And if you watch the videos, you'll see those assignments and you'll hear me talk about them and you'll know to turn them in. I kind of like to sneak them in there in the videos to make sure people are watching them. And I'm always amazed that like people don't do the extra credit. I've had classes where so many people just don't even do it and that just boggles the mind. It helps you by helping you learn the stuff. These are not like crazy time consuming things e either. They're not like, they're usually not like ridiculously hard or challenging things. So do it. Helps you learn, helps you grade. Okay. What else? We got our basic schedule here. It sort of just says like during each week, what we're doing as far as lab chapters, what we're doing as far as lecture topics and it also tells us the weeks when we're taking our exams now notice that sometimes we might be finishing something up in a week and then taking an exam on it so a couple more weeks here what we're doing in lab what we're doing in lecture and notice I put the appropriate chapter as well although in blackboard I give you more detail about you know where exactly you're reading you know in chapter 13 for example and more dates. Final exam week is the 4th to the 10th of December, and this one will be all finished. Notice you have your last lab exam the week before you have your last lecture exam. Okay, a couple other stuff. Read this stuff here on your own. Check it out. See if anything applies to you. If you have questions about it, let me know. Same thing for this page. Read it. Check it out. If you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm not going to run through all this. But I do want to say a couple final thoughts. I want to leave you a few things. Number one, um, this syllabus is not like a binding legal contract. I am, you know, I might change things around. If, if need be, I might, I might do that. So I reserve the right to modify things. I might have forgotten to put something in here. 
you know um if i did it's okay i'll i'll post an announcement on blackboard and let you know what's up lastly email me if you have any questions in fact this is your first extra credit assignment right here just to make sure you're watching this video first extra credit assignment send me an email say hi tell me your name tell me something about yourself some tell me your name tell me a a fact ask me a question if you got one if you have one go ahead and yeah that's about it so if you have any questions please let me know and i will get back to you very quickly all right can't wait for this class to begin see you next time on the next video bye bye